because you're going to be reading an article, but uh, we want to get to uh, what happens in the late 20s where uh, things just go wrong for the United States and we take a turn for uh, a very terrible economic situation, a turn for the worse, if you will. Now, remember, the 20s had been extremely successful for the United States, economically speaking. After World War I was over, we're one of the few countries that has uh, an untouched farming uh, base that allows us to feed the world. Uh, we are uh, owed money by Great Britain and France uh, for war debts. Uh, we're a national power now, an international power that uh, we can uh, command more attention, more respect, more power in, on the world stage. And things are going really well for the United States. We're inventing new types of products. Uh, we And a lot of those are luxury, what we would call luxury products. And so these things are making the United States an economic power. The assembly line uh, allows uh, us not only to manufacture those faster, uh, but at the same time, we can start making them cheaper. And ultimately, it provides good paying jobs for individuals. So even regular folks get uh, a taste of these modern conveniences. And so these companies benefit radically. Now, while these companies are performing uh, very, very well for the uh, the United States as a whole, uh, stock prices are going up, and uh, these companies, people thought, you know, these things are always going to be this way. Uh, the good times are never going to stop, and unfortunately for them, they are terribly wrong about this. Okay, uh, there's a reason they call the twenty the twenties the Roaring Twenties, and one of them is is that the economy was roaring. All right. But the stock market uh, is going to take a terrible dive. And so this video is going to be really short, only be a few minutes. Uh, and then you're going to read an article. And uh, I don't ask you to remember specific dates that often, but one of them you need to remember is October 29th, 1929, Black Tuesday. OK, and on Black Tuesday, uh, you can see uh, from this chart here, there is a massive drop in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And remember, the Dow Jones Industrial Average is that numerical indicator of how the market as a whole is doing. And here's what's really interesting. You take a look, and this shows you the, the years preceding uh, the collapse here in 1929, but look at the trend in the 20s, okay? And this is really, really important. Uh, up to the 1920s, the stock market, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, was trending upward. People thought investing in the stock market was safe because even though there are daily dips here and there, the overall trend is upwards. All right, But on October 29, 1929, there is a massive drop in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. The stock market crash is going to trigger uh, a terrible event that we call the Great Depression. And we're going to get into the details of that later on. But what we want to be able to answer is why does this massive drop in the Dow happen? All right. And that's what you're going to read about here in a few minutes. But I want to show you a couple of things in this chart just to give you an idea of how bad the stock market crash is. You see that Black Tuesday happens and there is a precipitous drop. It's like a steep drop off a mountain, off a cliff, that there is a huge one day loss uh, of value on Black Tuesday. And you see there that a lot of people thought it was going to rebound in the days and the weeks ahead, that there's a short recovery. But look at the trend for the stock market. It drops dramatically. All right? It won't hit rock bottom until 1932. Uh, and one of the things that you, know, you want to remember specifically is that even though the market uh, you know, does trend back upwards in a lot of instances, uh, people thought this was a surefire bet. And when it comes to the market and companies, there's no such thing as a sure thing. There's always risk involved, okay? And we also remember, too, that's why it's a long-term investment. And you see on this little graphic, too, it tells you that the stock market doesn't recover to its high point uh, where it was prior to Black Tuesday. It doesn't recover it fully until 1954, uh, until after World War II is over. So the stock market is going to take a huge hit in a matter of years. And even though we talk about Black Tuesday, the Dow is going to continue dropping uh, for three years. So the stock market crash is going to be ridiculous. Uh, people who had a stock portfolio, meaning that the, 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 essentially the value of all the stocks that they owned was worth uh, you know, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, or even millions of dollars, which at that point is even more than it is now, uh, 
uh, people whose portfolio might have been a million dollars uh, worth of stock one day, the value of that drops to next to nothing on the next day. All right. So, uh, you know, if people who were really wealthy had a lot of their money tied up in the stock market, okay, but average Americans didn't, and you're still going to see, though, that there's a ripple effect, that even though it's going to be the wealthy people who are the big losers uh, on the stock market crash, there's, it's like a, uh, it's like a, a tsunami or a tidal wave, uh, you know, that comes from an earthquake. Uh, there's a massive earthquake, and it's really bad if you're around the earthquake. But it triggers a catastrophic tidal wave or a tsunami, uh, if, and that can be damaging even if you're 100 miles away from the earthquake itself. Okay, And that's what you're going to see today. So uh, once you have finished listening to this, which we're done now, make sure you check out your article on why the stock market crashes. All right, Feel free to send any questions my way uh, and uh, be able to answer those questions in the article.